All right, Harry, I, I liked what you did with the threads on that last uh, class, the last video. The thing that I was very impressed with is, you know, I was thinking about it, if you had to cut different size uh, shaft and different internal threads, what, what would your options be? Well, they're, they're pretty limited. I mean, you're, you, you're talking a lot of fixturing, a lot of jigs to be able to change size. I mean, that's the nice thing with the CNC and conversational cams. It's just filling a few blanks and away you go. I have seen taps where you could do internal threads you know, like a regular tap set, yeah. but um, they're probably limited in the size, and, and you'd have to have a different tap for every single hole. Right. Right. But with the software and the CNC, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Any size hole in you that you want. That's awesome. All right, so what are we going to focus on this week? Well, so I want to talk about doing the gears this week, and uh, I just wanted to tell you I used a, a software package called Gearotics to do the design on these gears. Yeah, I know that package is pretty awesome. Really, really powerful software. Um, but I didn't, I didn't have that many design criteria that I was trying to hit. I just had a gap that was about 15 inches inside here. So I just started playing with it until I had got a number of teeth that got me up to pretty close to 15 inches in diameter. So you actually work backwards because normally yeah. you design the pitch of the, of the tooth and right. the number of teeth and so on and so on. And that would determine the diameter. But you work from the diameter backwards. Oh, that's cool. That's interesting. <laughs> and then you create the second gear. You know. Well, based on the same kinds of parameters, I knew I didn't want to get really big out here, but I get about a 2.8 to 1 gear reduction with this. But here again, it was just based on the size I, you know, I kind of designed to fit in this spot over here. Okay. So it's almost backwards from normal. Design yeah. the, the diameters on both pieces yeah. and then let the numbers fall. Right. And it still worked out the number of teeth perfectly in everything. Okay. I love these big heavy teeth. I mean this thing's it's durable, it's gonna last. You can put a lot of torque on here. It's it's brutal. It's beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna step over the machine then and you're gonna show how to set up and, and sure. cut the gear. Um, probably just cut one of the gears for the because it's exactly the same, right? Right. Okay, well let's yeah. step over there and talk Okay, about let's do it. Okay, we're here at the machine, and I've asked Harry to come over and show me exactly how we set this part up. This is the same part we kept the internal gears in the last video, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so how did we set that up originally? Well, usually, you know, this is just a preference, but typically I'll always put my origin in the center of my part, which is kind of something I got used to doing years ago. So my X, Y is at the center, and then my Z, I reference right off the top of the material. Okay, and if you're new to CNC, what that means is that you have a home position for the part. And a lot of times we'll put it in the corner, so X0, Y0 might be in the corner of the part. In this case, X0, Y0 is right here, and then this, the G code runs off those coordinates. And you can put those coordinates anywhere on the machine with different offsets. Okay, that's awesome. And your Z, you said, on the top. On the top, yeah. Okay, and uh, everybody's a little different, and there's, it's just a preference on how you want to do top or bottom. But you're using two tools, and the Z's on the top, so when it changes tools, obviously, we'll want to measure it. So, and, you did a Z axis set up like this, to, or a uh, smart tool set up to uh, define that zero plane on the surface. Right. Of wood. right. So when you run the program again, change the cutters, it just does its thing. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you one other thing that, that uh, about your optics. Um, you start designing in 2D, and you don't actually draw the gear. It draws the tooth profile and everything for you. You just start adjusting parameters, which is what I did. I just started adjusting parameters until I got the, the diameter that I knew was going to fit in there. Uh, and then one of the really cool features about it is it, it will produce a 3D model of that gear, and then you can animate it and see the gears meshing and everything. And then what I, and it also gives you a DXF file. So I just take that DXF drawing, drop it into my CAM software and tool path and I'm ready to go. Okay, uh, that's cool to understand how you get the G code ready to go. And you've got the G code here ready. We're, right. we're ready to start, so yeah. what's the next step? Hey, we're going to hit the go switch and get started. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, well it's waiting for me to change the tool, uh, but I've already put the half inch cutter in that I need to run this process. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit the go switch. It's going to come over and touch off on the tool, smart tool pad. It will reference the Z automatically and make the cut.
Okay, so we just finished making the rough cuts with that half inch cutter. Now I'm going to put the quarter inch cutter in and we'll do the cleanup cut on this. Wow, Harry, I, that's impressive. I was surprised at how fast you were able to cut this part out. Why don't you explain to me a little bit about your strategy, you know, how you planned out the tool path so you could cut this with this kind of speed? Well, I knew that if I used a larger cutter, I could take a, a bigger cut, and so I went ahead and, and ran that first cut with a half-inch cutter. So then I, I went ahead and programmed um, the rest of the cuts with this quarter-inch cutter. Uh, you, you notice that those holes were pretty much round uh, when we started. The nice thing about that half inch cutter is I knew that I wasn't taking out very much material so I could speed up the, the feed rates and also the plunge depths to come in and finish out these, these cuts in these radius areas. Hey, the other thing I noticed that uh, obviously you didn't want the gear to pop loose as you're cutting it out and so you obviously put some tabs in here and uh, it looks to me like you put the tabs right on the tips of the, of the yeah. Yeah, teeth there. Well, why don't you pull this out real quickly and just show them how that works. Yeah. Again, it's using the, the uh, low pro clamp, and so it makes it really easy to take these parts in and out. Yeah. And you, it doesn't require a toe clamp, so you don't have to worry about clearing clamps on top of the parts because it's clamping from the side. Right. So now all we have to do is uh, pull these four screws out, and we can relieve the spoil board from the part. And we'll just sand the tips of these gears where we had our tabs, and we're ready to go. You know, I can just imagine what it would take to cut the threads internal and external and then cut the gears with, with traditional tools. What would you do? I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't. So. I, I'm old, you know, I, mean, I can imagine trying to use a bang saw and a chisel and a scroll saw to get in here. And I don't know, it's just crazy. That's what I love about CNC. It's just, it, the possibilities are endless. I always like to say, you know, your imagination is not a limitation. That's <laughs> going to go way beyond right. what you would normally do, right? Right, right? So what are we going to do in the next video then? So in the next video, we're just going to talk about cutting our three dovetails in this three and a half inch thick material. And I can't wait to see that. It's going to be impressive. All right. And then we'll also uh, talk about a pocketing technique that I use to assemble the machine, but also make the machine easier to disassemble. Pocketing. Okay. I'm looking forward to find out how we're using pocketing. I get to learn all of Harry's little secrets as we go through this project, so um, this is great for me. Hope it's good for you, too. <laughs> okay. All right, well then, let's uh, look forward to the next video. All right.